Good morning. Global markets are shifting decisively away from North America and Western Europe and to Asia and other parts of the developing world. It's here where the largest populations are, where the factories are, where all the growth and consumer markets are going to be. It's also where most of the STEM graduates are and tens of millions of top engineers and scientists. So business executives literally have no choice. It is a business imperative to do business here, to develop relationships and markets. The long-term viability of their companies will have nothing to do with how well it comports with the whims of Western politicians who are here today but gone tomorrow. It is entirely dependent on their ability to work in and succeed in markets in Asia, South America, Eastern Europe, and Africa. Intel is an American semiconductor company. They make computer chips, and they just reported disaster numbers for the quarter. Intel stock was down over 26% on the day, and it's now back to where it was back in 2013. Going back further, if you bought Intel shares in 1998 and have held them, you haven't made any money in 25 years. The CEO of Intel is Patrick Gelsinger, and he said yesterday that in the past three years, revenues at Intel are down $24 billion, despite a 10% increase in headcount. They have failed to capitalize on the AI boom the way NVIDIA and some others have. He's looking now to do $10 billion worth of cost savings, and that means layoffs. 15,000 layoffs company-wide, including about 3,000 in the state of Oregon alone. So this is a company that's in survival mode, not looking to expand. They're looking to make deep cuts instead. Except that's not what Intel is really doing. In China, Intel is expanding aggressively. Intel set up a venture capital arm, which has current investments with 40 Chinese companies, with over 120 since the VC arm began. Currently, Intel is invested in 16 AI startups in China and in 15 companies in Chinese semiconductors. Also, cloud, EVs, VR, and battery tech. A Chinese VC guy says that Intel cannot be left behind, so they're scouring the world for where they can find AI, and China is one of the only places to be. Intel recently set up a new innovation hub in Shenzhen with the objective of helping Chinese startups. Intel is partnering directly with the local government there to develop artificial intelligence, advanced semiconductors, and edge computing. The center is built to address the local market demands, that is, the demands of the Chinese market. Intel is so far the largest recipient of grants from the CHIPS Act, which is intended to bring semiconductor manufacturing to the United States. They've been promised over $8 billion to date. That's been proposed, though this money hasn't been given out quite yet, just promised. And we can see the problem posed for Intel. Their revenues are off $24 billion over just a few years. And right now they're laying off 15,000 people to save 10 billion. So $8 billion worth of promises for the future is not gonna help them get through today. All those billions of dollars in CHIPS Act subsidies were intended to motivate Intel to build in Arizona and Ohio and hire thousands of people. Washington officials see, though, what Intel is saying they want to do with the subsidies we're giving them to hire workers in the U.S., and also what Intel is doing, which is working with the Chinese government and the startups here. The Treasury Department just announced rules that are clearly aimed directly at Intel and other U.S. companies who have done what Intel is doing, which is they're setting up separate venture capital firms so they can continue to work in and with China and these proposed rules would prohibit all that. The proposed rules would prohibit U.S. investments in Chinese companies for semiconductors, quantum computing, and AI systems. The regulations will probably become final in a few months and will affect VC and PE firms, which are exactly like Intel's. Going back to the Financial Times, Intel Capital's investments were poster children that helped build consensus for these new restrictions from the Treasury. Washington officials from Commerce and Treasury are struggling, naturally, to convince Tokyo and Amsterdam that they need to stop their companies, 
the Japanese and Dutch companies, from selling tech to China. China is where most of their revenues and profits are coming from, and it's where all of their future revenues and profits will be coming from. The companies know it, and so do their governments. Patrick Gelsinger is one of the biggest cheerleaders for this CHIPS Act money, but he realizes deep down that all those free billions in tax incentives don't matter if his company cannot design new chips or have markets to sell those new chips in. And he needs China for that. This is Kunming, Yunnan province. Be good. Do unto others as you 